Hello, welcome to the most dangerous podcast. This week it's our Halloween special. Ooh. <laughs> Hi James, how are you doing? I'm not too bad. How are you? I'm good, thanks. Are you all set for Halloween? I am. I do. I like spooky season. To be honest, I'm quite into my paranormal and my, and my ghosts and my goblins and stuff like that. In fact, I was thinking we should perhaps change the name of our uh, podcast this week. Yeah, yeah. We call it the uh, the most spookiest podcast. The most spookiest podcast. Yeah, we can, we can do that. You know, maybe change the logo, put a couple of spiders on it or something like that. Yes, yes, I'll do that. That's. I've been looking there for some go. more work to do at the weekends. Uh, yeah, I was expecting <laughs> you to put up more of a fight, but never mind. I will go. I will. Uh, that's been agreed. How about you? Have you ever seen a ghost, Fraser? Have I ever seen a ghost? Yeah, we'll jump straight in. Let's go. Straight for the jugular. No. Um, I've had... <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Carry on. <laughs> um, I, I believe I, I lived in a haunted house when I was between the ages of two and three. Really? Um, yeah, very quick uh, story, actually, because I didn't even put this in my notes. But I lived in a house in Summerford Road in Broughton. And I was two or three, my granny Ruby, uh, who you know well, um, yep. she came down to stay and she told the story of waking up during the night and an old man standing over her, looking down oh. on her at the foot of the bed. <laughs> Knowing your, your gran, <laughs> are you sure this was a ghost? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, she had had an awful lot to drink that night, but... <laughs> Interestingly, my sister um, also talked about seeing strange people in the house. Um, oh, right. And we moved out from that house. And about 10 years later, we read a story in the local paper about a little girl living in the house next door that kept telling her parents that she saw people in the house. Wow. So that could be a, a, a yeah, real paranormal activity. But, I mean, you can't trust kids with this sort of stuff, though, can you? No. I mean, kids... And crayons are perhaps the most scariest thing combination <laughs> going. If you give a kid a crayon and it starts drawing this like weird sort of black figure. Yeah. You go, oh, what, what's that, Bobby? That's the man that lives in my cupboard. Yeah. You know, stuff like that. So I don't know if kids are really kind of reliable when it comes to seeing ghosts. So our Halloween special, so we were just going to do it a slightly different format. Um, but as 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 ever, um, I thought we'd we'd just have a wee look at the, the history of Halloween. So uh, okay. I did a bit of Googling on that and found pages and pages and pages um, of, you know, the origins of Halloween and everything. I can imagine it's a big, big subject. It is. Um, but I, I finally found a website that summarized it in two paragraphs. Excellent. That's thought, what you yeah, need. That's, that's what our listeners want. Um, so the, the, the history of Halloween, the, the Halloween holiday has its roots in the ancient Celtic festival of. Go on. <laughs> you can do it. Sawin, it says here. Sawin. It's, it's, right. it's spelt like Sam Hain. Yeah. I think after, after the, um, after the uh, cheese debacle, where I completely messed up that Italian guy's name, oh, gee, uh, we've, stopped, we've, yeah, we've stopped sending each other notes, so we can't, <laughs> so we, so we can't go, oh, it's actually this, and make each other look stupid. So, uh, yeah, I'm happy with that. Yeah, so the, the, the ancient Celtic festival of Asawin, a pagan religious celebration to welcome the harvest at the end of the summer. Right. Yeah, so, so people basically light bonfires and wear costumes to ward off ghosts. That makes sense. So it's kind of like, you know, it's the end of, um, what's, what's that? Yeah, the harvest. What was that thing you used to have in school? Where they, the they, Harvest Festival. Was that the, the Harvest Festival? So it's kind of similar sort of time. And it's the end of the summer. It's when you get all your crops and put them in storage. And it's time to hunker down for the winter. Yeah, when the broad beans were sleeping in their blankety beds. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. God, yeah. I used to sing those like rocking Jesus tunes in assembly. <laughs> So let's finish this uh, first paragraph. Um, <laughs> Just get the content in, shall we? Get the content in. In the 8th century, Pope Gregory III designated November the 1st as a time to honour saints. Soon after, All Saints Day came to incorporate some of the traditions of Samhain. The evening before All Saints Day was known as All Hallows' Eve and later Halloween. 
Right. Okay, that's uh, that makes sense then, doesn't it? So it's uh, an old pagan kind of festival. Yes. Yeah. That's been stolen by modern, well, like religion, but not really a religious holiday. It's just more of a like a pointer in the year to go. All right, we're here now. Get your shit together. <laughs> Absolutely, and then someone thought, I can sell a load of shit here. (laughs) (laughs) I I can make a fortune out of this. Yeah, yeah. Now you just buy really random stuff, like hands that walk on their own and vampire teeth. And So did you you know why, how it's been modernised? Like, why do you get, like, sweets and stuff when you walk around? I did see why people go around uh, getting sweets. Um, And there were three theories on it. No one actually knows the truth. And all three theories were quite long-winded. Okay. Um, So I I just, I dodged it. (laughs) Right. Um, The theory that I did like um, was that the idea in the Harvest Festival, what people used to do um, was they, they put their spears out at their door and people would go about you know, maybe they've got a bit of extra corn and stuff like that, and they would take the spares that people had left at the door from their harvest. Ah, right, okay, yeah. So it's kind of you got you get your leftovers, and you kind of just go, oh, I'll have a bit of that. Like That's a, it, and yeah. not like necessarily away, away and pay. <laughs> yeah, not not necessarily spares. Sometimes people just leave a bit extra as a treat out for maybe the the, the, the you know the the less fortunate. Um, and the the actual dressing up, because it was the night of the spirits, people would actually dress up as ghosts to blend in with the spirits um, God, yeah. as they went around right. door to door taking the little bits of food. That was that was the theory that I liked. That was the one that, to me, sounded the most believable. Yeah, no, that's fair enough. <laughs> like, like we said at the top of the episode, I think it's a big subject. I think you could probably do a, a full episode on it. But this is a Halloween special, and we're just it's we're going to treat it differently, aren't we? We're going to do yeah. a couple of different points that you know listeners can um, listen to. We go back to normal <clears throat> next week, Definitely. but this one because because we know Halloween's coming up, we thought we'd uh, give everyone a little bit of a spooky treat. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I've got another another wee bit. I, I, what I picked out of the history of Halloween, I quite like the idea of. I wanted to know why uh, why we use pumpkins. Where, where did the pumpkin, the, as the Americans call the jack-o'-lanterns, where did they come oh, from? Yeah. Um, and it actually says the tradition of carving jack-o'-lanterns originated in Ireland using turnips instead of pumpkins. Yeah, I bet they look shit. <laughs> <laughs> and and if you ever if you ever tried to carve out a pumpkin, well, my my mum and my auntie they they used to carve turnips. Really? Oh, so it's like even like quite a modern modern thing that they used to. Still yeah. do. Um and I I mean a pumpkin's hard enough, but a turnip's rock hard. And it's a lot smaller yeah, as well. I was gonna say, um, so pumpkins are, are really difficult to carve out. And and you always make them like cockeyed. Oh yeah. But they're and, and a bit and yeah, and, and I suppose that adds to the charm. Yeah. But a turnip, hollowing out a turnip. Yeah. I, I mean you best you start in September to get it done <laughs> in time. Apparently my granda Joe used to do it with a Swiss army knife. He had to carve out the turnips and then Mum and Julie got to draw the pictures on them, and <laughs> but yeah, it used to start about September time. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. So um, it's allegedly based on a legend about a man named St- a man named Stingy Jack, a man named Stingy Jack, who repeatedly trapped the devil and only let him go in the condition that Jack would never go to hell. But when Jack died, he learned that heaven did not want his soul either. So he was forced to wander the earth as a ghost for eternity. <laughs> oh no! Got it. Poor Jack. Um, so no, it's like, oh, I, 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 you've got to promise me. I'm not going to go to hell. I promise you. No worries. No worries. It's fine. We're all mates. It's all sorted. And then he goes upstairs. <laughs> You're weird, you. <laughs> Sorry, mate. You've been yeah. carrying around a demon for the past thirty years. <laughs> You're not coming in here. No room at the end, I'm afraid. <laughs> He's got, yeah, he's got nowhere to go now. Yeah. Poor man. So it says the devil gave Jack a burning lump of coal in a carved out turnip to light his way. 
Locals eventually began carving scary faces onto their own turnips to frighten away the evil spirits. Oh. Not Jack himself, though. Not Jack, no. no. See, that would make a more terrifying story. So that's a, a wee bit of the, the history of Halloween, um, enough to, to give you an idea. Um, so so with it being our Halloween special, I believe you have a wee ghostly tale for us, James. Yeah, that's right. But well, we thought we'd mix things up a little bit this week, didn't we? And we'd, we'd, we'd sort of both have a little bit of a say on the... Because it happen, happens once a year, so we thought we'd both chip into the, to the Halloween vibe. And absolutely. you're absolutely right. I do have a, a little bit of a... I do have a little bit of a tale um, with regards to a, a certain building in the UK called the Ancient Ram Inn. The Ram Inn. Have you ever heard of the Ancient Ram? Well, I, I can tell. I know that you haven't heard of it already, <laughs> but <laughs> I haven't. Even no. though I sent you all the details yesterday, yeah, I can. I can tell you've not put put in the groundwork. But it's fine because I'm going to tell you all about it. The Ancient Ram Inn is an ancient inn. As the name suggests, um, it's from a, it's about eight hundred years old. This building, uh, it's a Grade Two listed building in Wotton Under Edge in Gloucestershire. So Gloucestershire is what, yeah. So eight hundred years old. Now the deeds uh, are actually still intact, um, but they're written in Norman French. Uh, <laughs> they're held in the local records office in, in Gloucestershire. Yeah, this is how old this this place is, um, and they read. Uh, this is, they actually say the ancient Ram Inn dates uh, to time immemorial. Um, do you know what? Do you know what that means? No, no. So it it means that something's been on this particular site since anyone can remember, even before things were written down. There's been something here on this on this site. So I was going to say when you say something, some kind of pub uh, structure or. Uh, yeah, like you know, some sort of building or structure right. has been has been there since anyone can remember, since anyone has been able to write things down or talk about. It, there's been something on this site, okay. Wow. Uh, so, so that suggests it's it's possibly even older than 1800 years old. Um, it's still it's still standing today. Um, so the original use of this this inn, mm -hmm. uh, it was to house to house the masons, you know, the stone masons, as they were oh, building yeah. the church. Uh, or constructing the church in the <clears> local <throat> area, which is just up the hill from, from the inn. Mm -hmm. um, and then later in 1154 AD, um, it was taken up as the dwelling for the, the vicar of that church. Right. So a lot of religious activity going on. It's got connections with the local church and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, as you can imagine, it's been owned by loads of people since 1145, uh, sorry, 1154. Um, but from 1960, uh, a chap called John Humphreys uh, purchased the property. Um, so I say 1960, I think it was 1960s. I don't have the exact date, I'm sorry, but it's 1960-ish. Yeah. Uh, a chap called John Humphreys uh, purchased the property uh, and owned it until his death in September 2017. Right. Uh, and as I say, it's believed to be the most haunt one of the most haunted locations, if not the most haunted location in Britain. Wow. So as I mentioned, yeah, I mean this is this is some spooky stuff. As I get as I get into it, like you might start getting goosebumps. So you know, <laughs> if you get too scared, we can have a break. Don't worry about that. I might need that. So what makes it so haunted? Yeah, well I was just gonna sort of whiz through some of the mm. the reasons why there might be some sort of connection, some spiritual connection to this place. Uh, and then I'll I'll explain to you what people have seen and what the like this, the scary shit actually is. Um, so, as I mentioned, there's been something on this particular site since, since anyone can remember, and it's believed that before this construction of the actual inn, uh, it was home to a pagan burial ground. What the hell? It, it's on. Do you know what ley lines are? Have you ever heard of them? Ley lines? No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So ley lines, they're kind of, it's a bit weird. They're, they're, a lot of paranormal people sort of talk about them and stuff. It's believed that they're sort of these spiritual lines and they connect like ancient monuments to, monuments together. So if you think this site or this inn has a straight mm -hmm. direct line to, to Stonehenge, 
Right. But, I mean, that's not that's ridiculous because anything has a straight line from Stonehenge. But <laughs> it, they're all these ancient things are con- connected. So Stonehenge will then go on to connect something else that's an ancient monument, and then go on to right. something else. Uh, and mm. it's believed that these that they're prehistoric lines that sort of ancient people used to use for navigation. So they go, all oh, right, I'm at Stonehenge now. If I walk directly in this line, I'll get to the mm-hmm. old ram in. <laughs> so this this is on a cross. <laughs> it's probably not true, but, but <laughs> so this, this ram in is on is on one of these ley lines that connects to Stonehenge, and it's, and it's actually on a crossroads of another one that connects to somewhere else, which I didn't read about. But apparently, it's on this crossroads of these ley lines. And, and that, according to paranormal investigators, makes it susceptible to lots of activity when it comes to ghosts and ghouls and all that shit. Right. So, yeah, so, so that's where it sits. It's very strange that it sits on this site. It's not, not many places do, but sit on sort of crossroads of these ley lines. But when it comes to these paranormal investigators, they think that uh, that's a big deal. So they think that, like, a cross line makes it, makes it more powerful, almost. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Like these ley lines, they, they are sort of a, a mystical thing that it, it's weird. It's hard to explain, but you know. And if you're interested in this sort of stuff, then do have a look at it. But yeah, like these these historical sites, they do seem to line up mm-hmm. in the way that they're built. It's almost like you know, if you, you know, the pyramids are kind of constructed in the same way as the stars. This is mystical. Yeah. It's weird mm-hmm. that all these sort of things line up in a straight line. And if you look the other way, all this other stuff lines up in a straight line. And at this cross point, where all these weird things line up, is the ancient Ramin. So, as I mentioned, it's possible, likely, in fact, that this inn, the ancient Ramin, was built on an, an ancient pagan burial ground. Um, there's, as it's such an old building, a large part of it is still intact. And there's a, there's a barn, uh, not part of the inn, but it's connected to the property. Um, but they, the historians believe that this barn is once uh, an old Saxon church, wow. which people used to worship in. Uh, now it's just full of sort of junk and stuff, but it's pretty <laughs> creepy. <laughs> yeah, the, like this Mister Humphreys, he was a bit of a uh, a hoarder, I think. So, yeah. but we'll come on to him later anyway. But yeah, so yeah, Sa- I Saxons. I don't think it was Christianity then. I think it was more more sort of pagan rituals and stuff. Mm-hmm. So, but part of it seems to be yeah. Well, it, this was a specific place before the church was built where uh, ancient Saxons would go and worship, and th- this forms part of the building. Right. This was the pagan worshiping. Y- yeah, yeah. Yeah. So they. Yeah, the pagan burial. It almost seems like it's some sort of religious site for pagans. Mm-hmm. It seems right. to be. So they've got the burial ground, and then they've also got like a church area. You know, it's been there for mm-hmm. thousand years, even more. In fact, you know, so there's there's a, there's a lot of history in this place. It's it's pretty creepy. So as I say, uh, Mr. John Humphreys bought the place in the sixties. Mm-hmm. Uh, in fact, it says here the late sixties. It's in accordance my notes. It's probably a bit sort of yeah. 68, 69, something like that. Uh, the reason he bought it is because it was um, it was going to be destroyed. It was going to be pulled down, uh, oh, wow. and he thought to himself, you know, it's a lo- lovely building. Um, it, Mr. Mr. Humphreys himself was a carpenter, so he came out the RAF, um, X Squad E, you know, World War Two and all the rest mm-hmm. of it. Uh, he was skilled as a carpenter and a joiner. There were some rumours that this o- old building was going to get torn, so, torn down, so he bought it with the view to doing it up and making it a bed and breakfast. <laughs> yeah, so then, so off the back of that, he started knocking down walls and pulling things out and putting things back in and, and all the rest of it. Um, now, I, I've heard... I'm quite into my paranormal stuff. Now, I don't believe mm-hmm. in any of it, if I'm perfectly honest, but I'm quite interested in it because some people have seen some shit and not everyone can be wrong, so... <clears throat> Why do they see that shit? Why why is, do, do people see things out the corner of their eye or, or what have you? Now, what seems to happen in a lot of stories is that shit starts to happen when they start messing about with the place that they're in. You know, they start knocking down walls. And right. Stuff like that. Now, now, I did hear a theory quite recently that suggested that, you know, like mold and spores, particularly in old older buildings, mm-hmm. might sort of form in the cavities of the walls and then when you start knocking them down those spores kind of 
get exposed to, to the air mm-hmm. and the person who's in the property basically starts tripping you know <laughs> and the, I, know it's, I know it sounds weird but you know there's certain type of you know, like you know, magic mushrooms don't you but there's certain type of spores that might trigger some impact in your brain so you start knocking down stuff in the house and, and mm-hmm. you know, knocking a wall through these spores spray up into the air and then all of a sudden you're like fucking hell is that mickey mouse that's a little yeah. bit like when people tell you a ghost story they always sort of finish with you know i was a bit pissed at the time or you know <laughs> yeah. there's, there's always kind of a, a kind of more simple expan- explanation it does seem that way like you know whenever you hit like you say whenever you hear some someone tell a ghost story it's always like well i was going through a bit of a hard time at the time and uh just split up with me missus and uh, i was drinking a lot yeah taking 14 tramadol a day <laughs> yeah yeah there's no one there's never never a ghost story that starts with like yeah i was having a blast i was in the I was having a really good time. I was in the best place in my life, and just this woman just walked up to me, and, I, I, and she was dressed up in Victorian clothes. It, it's, it's always there's always some caveat, isn't there? Mm-hmm. But so anyway, as I say, so we started doing this renovation in the, in the property in the in the inn itself. It had been heavily renovated before he took over, and, and you know people had made it. Well, it was it used to, as the name suggests, it was a, a pub, an inn in the local area. Um, so all the old brickwork, the fireplaces had been bricked up. Um, there were still fireplaces there, but you'd had you had the little ones. It wasn't the old ancient fireplaces. Yeah, yeah. So part of the, as he as he started to work his way through the property, he knocked through these fireplaces, uh, and in one of the uh, you know, to restore them back to their original mm-hmm. standing, one of the fireplaces that he knocked through, he came across a mummified cat mummified so yeah wrapped in bandages right. well no not not quite not in the you know egyptian mummified sense mm-hmm. it was a cat so what had happened so that the, the it'd been bricked up by limestone mm-hmm. and the cat in the fireplace it, it just bec- limestone has a sort of natural ability to kind of pull moisture out of the air yeah. and, and there wasn't much sort of air in there anyway Mm-hmm. So someone had put a cat in the wall, hopefully dead, and bricked <laughs> it up. And then, when, when, and then when Mr. Humphreys came across it, it, it was just intact, completely intact. Oh wow! You know, it's still it's still in the in the inn at, to, to this day. Or well, he just put it back. He put it in a glass case, <laughs> so, you, so you can go and have a look at it. Yeah, it, it, it's pretty creepy. But it, it, I mean, it's not that unusual actually for people mm-hmm. to put dead animals in walls and stuff i mean some people put trinkets in walls particularly sort of back in the day you know to ward off spirits or to give them good luck they put dead cats in the wall yeah they could be in old older buildings yeah yeah mm-hmm. but i mean i think to remove it it's a bit of a no-no i think you kind of oh right yeah messing with messing with shit there you know <laughs> you just just leave it where it is put the, put it put the bricks back in quick <clears throat> yeah just so. that wouldn't really mess with it and, and another instance when he was doing these reservation uh renovations even uh he was digging up the floor trying to put new flooring in and he came across a shallow grave um, in containing the bones of what we think are two children, two children, two children. Yeah, that's right. Shit. Uh, the bones were so old that the bones were sent to Bristol University to, University to be analysed, mm-hmm. um, but they were so old that the university itself couldn't be s- completely certain as to, to whether they, they were human or animals. Um, unfortunately, the, the university lost the bones. So, uh, <laughs> or did or did they? Or were they stolen by a ghost? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah. So, so they can't go back to that. But the, the reason about why they think that the bones were human is because alongside the, the bones, they found um, two uh, sacrificial daggers. Actually, they think they were sacrificed children. That's right. You know, the, the, the pagans did some weird shit, didn't they? So, oh yeah. Yeah, they, they, the theory is that they sacrificed two children in, on this site and mm-hmm. then threw, threw them in these in these graves. And the, the daggers, again, were really old. They were just broken up into pieces, mm-hmm. but they managed to sort of put them all together. 
Uh, and again, the daggers were in the inn, and people could go and see them until quite recently. Uh, but someone stole them. Someone stole them. Yeah, yeah. So they were in like a case, in a casing, and sort mm-hmm. of hung on the wall. You know, kind of sort of put put together. Uh, yeah, and someone just just has just nicked them, which is completely outrageous. For for what? I know that's the thing, like because because he wanted them. Yeah. <laughs> what a bastard! You, you can't you can't <laughs> sell them. You can't cut fish up with them because they're old and broken. I just hope whoever stole them is getting haunted to shit right now. Oh yeah, you know, says them says them right. I hope they've got like ghosts coming out of their walls. <laughs> they've been possessed by the devil himself. It's just completely out of order, isn't it? They just nick yeah. stuff for the sake of nicking stuff. Maybe the bones that went missing. Maybe this guy's got the bones, and then every night the bones get up and chase him around the house. So he's had to go and get the daggers to try and kill the children again. <laughs> it's like some mad. <laughs> You'd make a film out of that, couldn't you? <laughs> Scooby Doo. <laughs> Supernatural. <laughs> yeah, oh no. I stole the bones. <laughs> now I can't stop the bones. Now I need the daggers. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. So yeah, so uh, yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe. So we'll move on to the the haunting shortly. So Mr. Humphreys, um, he was a very religious man. He, he died in 2017, I think I said. But before mm-hmm. that, he was a, a very religious man. Um, he was when he, he he was a trained carpenter. He was in the RAF, but he, I believe at the time he bought the property, he was looking to become a bishop i think i mean i don't know what the hierarchy of the church is i don't know whether i don't think it's a vicar a, a bishop is that can you do that he's trained to be one of them depends depends on the church doesn't it it's whether it's Does the it? catholics or protestants or different yeah well he was training to be something in the church he, he, you know, he was like full-on you know bible, yeah. bible guy uh, and he said he used to say to his children that the only, the only ghost that i believe in is the holy ghost uh, until the first night he stayed in this house. Because <laughs> <laughs> apparently what happened, um, he was sleeping in bed. And I guess he must have been in a weird position where his his arms were above his head. You know, sometimes you sleep like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then he, he was pulled from his bed by his wrists out, out of the bed. Shit. Like, just violently pulled out, out of the bed. Uh-huh. Yeah. And uh, from from that very day, so that was, I did read that that was the first night he stayed there. I'm not sure about that. I mean, these you know these stories do get sort of convoluted over time. Yeah. So, but from that moment, he would only walk around the house holding a Bible. <laughs> he, he was that. He was. I mean, he, he stayed there till he died. He never left. But yeah, I think he was a bit sort of terrified about what would happen, particularly mm. after that. How did he know that it wasn't the Holy Ghost that pulled him out of bed? Well, I, I, I guess that he thinks the Holy Ghost is a nice ghost. Yeah, and better the, things and to the do. Holy Ghost wouldn't do. But yeah, yeah. What even is the Holy Ghost? It's Jesus, isn't it? Jesus, not the Holy Ghost. No, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, isn't it? Oh. It's three of them. They did the whole the Trinity, the Holy Trinity. Did you not do Bible studies in school? <laughs> I didn't know. <laughs> you just weren't just weren't listening. When I when I went to when I moved to Christleton, my first lesson on my first day was RE. And my teacher was called Mrs. Smedley. And she wrote her name for me in the board in cursive, you know, like proper old fashioned joined up writing. And her D looked like an L. Oh, right, yeah. And she said, this is my name, and put it on the board. And I went, ha-ha, Mrs. Smelly, because that's what it looked like. And she got, she sent me out. <laughs> so my first day, my first lesson, my first day in my new school, I was sent out one minute in. Um, so it wasn't a good start. So I didn't really get on with my RE teacher after that. So I didn't really pay much attention. Oh, uh, you, missed, you missed the day. You missed the lesson where they were talking about the Holy Trinity then. That's it, yeah. I did the Father and I did the Son. But I miss the Holy Ghost. Yeah, so you know who those two are. Who's the Holy yeah. Ghost? I mean, I don't know who it is. Isn't it? Is it the ghost that turns up and, and says hello to Mary? Maybe. Isn't it? I that? don't know. Gabriel, Arch April, Arch Angel Gabriel. Is that a thing? <laughs> 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 yeah. 
he's just some dude who knocked up Mary. Yeah. <laughs> he's he's just the bloke that's in the pub called he's just a bloke called Gabriel. Yeah. And then he you know, he knocks knocks up Mary and then he has she has to go over and say to Joseph. I know. What a man, Joseph. How trusting and patient would <laughs> you be? Yeah. You know you know how like I'm a virgin in that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I'm I'm pregnant because God said that I am. It's nothing to do with Gabriel. <laughs> Don't worry about him. Yeah. In fact, I think he's an angel. Definitely an angel. Yeah. The Holy Ghost. So the ancient ram, right? As I mentioned, it's apparently one of the most, if not the most, haunted sites in the UK. It does sound it? And the reason, yeah. Well, there's a lot of history there. So if it is true that paranormal, the paranormal beings that walk among, among us are connected to history, mm-hmm. then it would be understandable why this place would be one of the most haunted places. So, I mean, people have seen a lot of shit in this, this property. Um, there's several, several entities uh, apparently stalking the corridors of this place. I mean, it's not a massive place it's a, it's an inn you know but it's but it's a reasonable size um perhaps the most famous is a witch um that resides in funnily enough the witch's room <laughs> i think they called it <laughs> i think they called it that after oh, um, right. people started to see this this entity so this this witch apparently they know who she is she was burned at the stake um around about the 1500s mm-hmm. you know when they had that sort of witch hunting craze yeah, they did. They, they went through that little kind of little phase of burning them all, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, a lot of people say, well, she wasn't a witch. She was, she was like a faith healer, and she used to sort right. of cure people with herbs and stuff like that. And uh, it's like, what? You, you go against our religion. <laughs> you do things different to us. We must burn you at the stake for being a witch. So I think it was one of them. So I think she was a kind of a healer, rather than a. Yeah, well, I, the thing about burning at the stake, what well, what I read is that if they burn, then they're not a witch, and if they don't burn, they're a witch. Because they've got magical powers. Uh, no, actually. Sorry to interrupt. It was they would throw them in a river or a lake before they burnt them at the stake. Right. So if she sinks, she's a witch. Right. If she floats, she's not. Ah. But then, obviously, if you float, you survive. Mm-hmm. So she's a witch. So she gets burnt at the stake. Right. Yeah. So just yeah, swim. <laughs> just fucking swim. So anyway, yeah. So so apparently, this this lady was burnt at the stake in the, the witch trials and all the rest of it. Um, she fled a trial. So she was um, due to go on trial, and she escaped and fled, uh, and and took refuge in the ancient ram. Uh, she was captured after she ran away, um, and then she, her legend lives on in this in this room. Mm-hmm. Um, and she, she's, people have seen sights of sightings of her. Um, she sort of stands in the corner. <coughs> yeah, I think it's weird things like that. You yeah. know, weird stuff gets moved around. The usual stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, there's, yeah, uh, there's a, a woman that was reportedly murdered in the attic, yeah. uh, and she's been seen as well. Oh. Yeah, like an uh, apparition of her has been seen. Uh, there's also stories of a former innkeeper's daughter who also who hanged herself in the attic. Oh dear. Um And she's she's been seen, um, like a dark shadow mm-hmm. of her, sort of hanging from the rafters. Um, the, now the bishop's room, again, <laughs> this was named after this the activity. Um, this is considered to be the most haunted room in, in, the, in the property itself. Um, and this is where the, the bishops would stay. So several bishops have been there through the ages, yeah. and, and actually, there's, there's several bishops apparently who, who haunt this room. Uh, apparently, there's a dark monk who resides in this room. Dark right? monk. Uh, yeah, no, that sounds like manga, doesn't it? Like, yeah, the... it sounds pretty cool. I kind of like the idea of a dark monk. It's <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> like a ninja or something. Yeah. Um, what spiritual people believe is that this dark monk stops these bishops from crossing over to the other side right? and he keeps them there so you've got this dark monk who's a bit of a bastard mm-hmm. 
And then you've got these other sort of bishops who haunt the rooms going, no, oh, I just want to go <laughs> see Jesus and stuff. So, yeah, I mean, they get seen pretty regularly, apparently. Mm-hmm. See, that's quite quite a lifetime commitment to be a bishop and to spend your whole life dedicating it to God and being a bishop and not getting into heaven. That would that would be I'd haunt people because of the because of the bloody dark monk. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in this room as well, the bishop's room. There's been sightings of a Roman centurion. Wow. Uh, and there's a, a <clears> an incubus. An inc- Do you know what an incubus is? I don't know. I know a succubus. Yeah, these are like sexy ghosts. Yeah, yeah. Like get into bed with you and just feel you up in that. <laughs> So, yeah, do you, do you want, you, you, should we go? <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, yeah, uh, there's loads of activity. It's weird. I mean, paranormal stuff, if, if you're into all that. I mean, we're into it because it's Halloween. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so. Uh, if you go on to the usual sites, YouTube and all the rest of it, there's been loads of investigations. Mm-hmm. There's thousands of episodes of people visiting this ancient Rome right. property because what's happened is since the chap died the owner it got passed to his daughter mm-hmm. um, through succession uh, she took ownership and I think this might have happened before the chap died anyway but you can actually go and visit it for a night right it's a bit a bit of a touristy thing now so it's not an inn it's not been an, an inn mm-hmm. or a pub for a long long time it's a place you can just go and visit and stay the night like a if living museum wanted. type thing yeah, it's a really weird. I do kind of recommend that you go and have a look at the place mm-hmm. um, on sort of YouTube and all the rest of it because it's just full of crap. Like, <laughs> there's loads of weird stuff in it, like the cat in a box, yeah, and, sh- and stuff like that. And like I mentioned, the daggers on the wall that are no longer there. Uh-huh. Yeah, there's there's a, a a crow in there that's a taxidermy crow that's hanging from the wall. Mm. So yeah, so in the back of the, before you've even arrived arrived in the back of your mind, mm-hmm. there is something going. You know, you think this place is spooky shit right? yeah, yeah you turn up for the night there's loads of random stuff on the walls there's a taxidermy crow there's a the, the grave i mentioned with the children in mm. is still open oh, on the floor with a crucifix on it what the hell yeah they've not covered it up it's just all there yeah so you walk in you go fucking hell this is well scary yeah so immediately your brain's going doing overtime mm-hmm. right then it gets dark and you turn all the lights off I think you're, just, you're gonna go fucking. Hell, I've I've seen something here. I've th- there was something. There was some movement over there, you know. So, yeah. And and this is what happens on these YouTube programs. Mm-hmm. You, do, you know, go and have a look at them. And I think people just because of the reputation. Now I'm not saying that stuff doesn't happen, but mm-hmm. I just think because of the reputation of it, it does get kind of, kind of over exaggerated. Yeah, yeah. Now I'm a, I'm a full on skeptic when it comes to stuff like this. I don't believe in ghosts really mm-hmm. i think if if i was to see a ghost i think it would actually change it would change your life wouldn't it because oh yeah it would make you question a lot of things now as i say so i am a skeptic but saying that though after seeing this place and after watching you know history videos about it and youtube videos with idiots doing paranormal investigations mm-hmm. if someone came up to me with a ticket and said yeah do you want to stay the night there <laughs> I, I i don't think i could do it I don't think I could do it. Yeah, I think this is a terrifying place. It it doesn't it does sound quite scary, but you know, I don't know if I need to know. I don't know if I need to go and stay there and find out. I, I kind of because if I went there and I didn't see anything, I'd be disappointed. But I kind of don't want to see anything if mm. there is something there, you know. So I don't know what what yeah. scenario would. Well, I don't be know. Good. I kind of I kind of do. Mm. I kind of do want to question things. I want to. I do want to see a ghost. Mm-hmm. To be honest, I do want to see because because the people that have seen ghosts, mm-hmm. I just don't believe them. They're always but, weirdos, though. <laughs> they often are. You know, I I don't know. I, I don't know about that. They often. Some of them are, yeah, mm-hmm. granted. But there's a lot of them, and some of them aren't. Yeah. Oh, let's. I tell you what. Let's do this because we don't. We've not done this before. But let's do this. So, to to our listeners, 
let's see Let's get in contact with us if you've seen a ghost that'd be interesting yeah tell us your story you know, if you believe in it and you, you think you've seen a ghost tell us your story why don't you drop us an email what's the email address again James and Fraser pod at gmail.com and um, we've got the Facebook page as well yeah. and no 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 dick pics yeah no dick pics no, no dick pics but it definitely does sound definitely does sound haunted I mean you know I know you're saying you're a skeptic and I'm a skeptic as well because I've not really seen anything and you know I, I remember um I remember I met this guy that said that he could talk to the dead and you know, you know, I, I, I'm a, a seer and I can talk to the dead and stuff like that. And while I was talking yeah, to him, he was he was in someone else's house that he'd come round to watch the WWF because he couldn't afford Sky. And I kind of thought, if you could talk to the dead, <laughs> you'd probably be able to afford Sky, you know. And yeah, yeah, also, what are the lottery numbers? Yeah, but the, these people they say, oh, I can talk to the dead, or you're. Your granddad says, don't worry about the money. Go and ask fucking Madeline where she is. Go and do something useful. You know? Actually, yeah. Did and... you ever see, like, Darren, that, Darren Brown did a thing, yeah. didn't he? Did you ever see that? No. So he did. You know, you get these um, me- mediums mm-hmm. that go, I'm, I'm looking for somebody called Dave. <laughs> Somebody's called, you know. Yeah. And he used to wear glasses. And then someone's going to go, yeah, 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 yeah. Me. So uh, Darren Brown did a show about it mm-hmm. where he just basically called it out and said, look, it's all suggestion. Yeah. And, you know, you go for, initially you go for a wide question, like, oh, is, somebody's lost somebody recently, mm-hmm. haven't they? Somebody's having money troubles at the moment, yeah. aren't they? Like, oh, yeah, I am, yeah. yeah. Like, <laughs> you know, so, yeah, it's all suggestion and mm-hmm. stuff like that. But saying that, though, you know, and a lot, a lot of it is shit and chat. Mm. And, like I say, I don't believe... In a lot of it, but there are certain some things that can't be explained. Yeah, you know, and they're the weird ones. Mm-hmm. You know, like this, like this this ancient ram in. Mm-hmm. It's not just one blo- bloke. It's not the guy that's lived there who's gone. Do you know what? I'm going to make this a tourist attraction. Yeah. I've seen a ghost in here. Loads <clears throat> and loads of people have seen it. There's been loads of activity. Like, how can all these people be wrong? Do you never think sometimes though that people say I'm going to stay in this haunted place and when they come back they tell their friends they saw something because they don't want to say they didn't well potentially but then if if it's somebody like me with my mm. mindset then I would turn around and say no I didn't see shit yeah I, I would believe you would say no it was bollocks but yeah mm. but I, I don't know it's a, it's a it's a weird question I, like I said I'm quite interested in all this stuff <laughs> I, think it's quite, I find it quite fascinating uh, just because I, I think that I don't think there's anything in it, but maybe, yeah, just maybe. 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 Okay. Well, well. Thanks so much for listening to my ramblings. There, I, I got sort of caught up in a little bit with researching the ancient <laughs> ram because it's absolutely fascinating, um, and I do recommend that you go and check this place out. Um, maybe not visit if you're a bit scared, but have a look online or whatever. Uh, now, Fraser, I understand that you have got also got a uh, a spooky story for us. Yes, I've I've looked up um, a wee story. Um, now, first of all, thanks for your story about the the ram. Um, I am quite intrigued. I, I think I'd possibly not go and stay the night, but you know, if I'm in the area, I'd probably drive past it and have a wee look inside. So, no, I'll read this this wee story. It's the mystery of the Enfield monster. Um. <clears throat> so, are you ready? Go for your life. Okay, so one night in 1973, the two young McDaniel children of Enfield, Illinois, claimed to see a weird creature lurking in their yard and trying to get in the house. But Father Henry McDaniel chalked their creepy story up to the active imagination of childhood. However, he changed his mind later that night after being awoken by strange scratching sounds. McDaniel grabbed a gun and a flashlight and peered outside his front door. There, between two rose bushes, he saw a creature that was almost like a human body, just as his kids had described. It had three legs on it, a short body, two little short arms, and two pink eyes as big as flashlights, he recounted to a reporter. (coughs) 
McDaniel said he fired four Christ. shots <laughs> and was sure he hit the creature at least once, causing it to make a hiss, much like a wildcat's, before it ran off towards a railway embankment. McDaniel was stunned when he saw the monstrous beast jump 80 feet in three jumps before quickly running out of sight. Do you say 80 or 8? 80. <laughs> 80 feet? 80 feet, yeah. Okay, carry okay. on. Um, the police found scratches on the door screen as well as footprints in the dirt near McDaniel's home that looked like dog-like with six toe pads, yet no clues pointed to an unusual creature. McDaniel's sighting made the, re the Reading Eagle, but it was clear most people didn't believe it was true. It didn't help that a 10-year-old neighbour faked his own eyewitness account of the beast only to later admit his testimony was a prank against the McDaniels. McDaniel reported, two... again. <laughs> McDaniel reported two more sightings of the alleged, alleged beast to local cops, but he said they eventually threatened him with jail time because no one believed what he saw had been real. But McDaniel I'm not was fucking surprised, to be honest. <laughs> Stop calling. Come on. Um, <laughs> yeah. He didn't jump 80 feet. It just didn't happen. <laughs> Father. <laughs> um, Is it oh, Father Jack? <laughs> yeah, Jack McDaniel. Um, where were we? McDa but McDaniel was adamant and stood behind his scary true story. If they do find it, McDaniel said in an interview, they will find more than one, and they won't be from this planet, I can tell you that. After McDaniel's public testimony about the Enfield monster, other eyewitness claims began to surface. Monster hunters swarmed the town, and at least five men were arrested after firing shots in the area and claiming to have photographed the creature. To this day, no explanation has been so uncovered for this small town creepy story. Has, has the, where are the photographs? <laughs> I, I think, yeah, they, they didn't. They had their thumb over the lens, I think. They didn't. We photogra photographed it with a AK-47. <laughs> uh, I'm going to call bullshit on that one. Yeah, I think it's bullshit as well. What, what I quite liked about it is is that that is, like, you get when you're saying about people believing in ghosts and stuff, I think these people don't help because this is this is clearly bollocks. Yeah. You know, and that's, you've got someone that's out there. A very that, good point, isn't it? Yeah, the, the, there's too many made-up stories that there, there could be one percent of ghost stories are actually true, but there's ninety-nine percent of made-up stories that that are so ridiculous that it actually just makes people think it's all bollocks. Yeah, but I mean, going off that story, it, it's quite easy to distinguish between the made-up ones and the real. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I mean, come on, like, what is it, a three-legged, short-armed pig thing that jump, jumps 80 feet in the air? Yeah, big pink eyes, like I mean, flashlight. What is he on? <laughs> What's he on? Yeah, he but the thing the is, he said it was he said it was human-like, and then he said it had three legs, short arms, <laughs> yeah. big pink eyes, like flashlights. <laughs> Weird you humans to hang around with some mad that. humans. Uh, yeah. Um, so that was my my little daft story. But I've got a couple of couple of kind of real life little Halloween facts and stories. But first of all, something yeah. I actually I discovered this afternoon that Harry Houdini actually died on Halloween in 1926. Uh, um, the escapologist, I think they call yeah. that's the official term, isn't it? So you might you might come onto this, but didn't he die in um, like weird circumstances? Like, didn't was it a trick that went wrong? I think are you coming onto this? That's exactly what I was going to say. I always thought he died doing a trick that went wrong, and I found out yeah, otherwise yeah. this afternoon. Um, he died from a ruptured appendix. Oh right, R yeah. really appendicitis? No. Um, no, his um, Houdini. This is this is the story. Houdini was teaching students in Montreal a series of tricks, and mentioned <laughs> mentioned it. <laughs> Sorry, 
Houdini was teaching students in Montreal a series of tricks and mentioned that his stomach muscles were so strong they could withstand punches without injury. A student then reportedly hit him over the appendix twice without warning, and whilst he felt <coughs> fine immediately after, he later complained of pain and collapsed right after the curtain fell at his next show. Oh, no. <laughs> Physicians confirmed that the student's punches caused Houdini's appendix to burst and poison his system. Bloody hell. He yeah. died on October the 31st. <laughs> oh, my God, right. I'm dead on me. <laughs> Check me out. Go on, hit me as hard as you can. Dead. <laughs> That that's like when uh, there was a boy in school that came in and told everyone that his Doc Martens were proper ones with steel toe caps, and then someone stamped on his toe and broke three of them. <laughs> uh, it's a bit like that. It's a bit more serious than that, though. <laughs> yeah, a bit more serious. Yeah, I did. Re- I did read a story actually quite recently, uh, not because of this, but it was just I just came it across it in, in passing about mm-hmm. a Russian dude, right? And he was um, similar. In a similar sort of profession, escapologist mm-hmm. and all that, um, and he was quite good at it. He had a bit of a following. I think he was doing sort of shows and stuff. Yeah. And um, one day he went for a walk into the woods, and he, he disappeared. Oh dear! And then no one knew where he'd gone. You know, his mobile phone wasn't used. So there was a big search party that was sent out, and they found him uh, chained to a tree. Sure. And he'd like starved. So he'd gone out into the woods to try and do a trick mm-hmm. and it had gone wrong and and it was on his own. So he just ended up like just dying in the woods tied to a tree. Yeah, I know. Um, so now so I've just got a couple of, a couple of wee, wee true stories that uh, interested me. Um, so first one I've got, A nine-year-old dressed in a Halloween costume was accidentally shot by a relative who thought she was a skunk. (laughs) What was she dressed as? (laughs) The girl was stood outside her Pennsylvania home during a party when the incident happened. Police said the girl was wearing a black costume and a black hat with a white tassel. Oh, no. That's really tragic. You know, like, the previous story involved guns as well. It's like... Is that is that a ghost? <laughs> Let me get my <laughs> shotgun. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I, I imagine a bullet would go right through a ghost. Well, yeah, um, and then hit a girl that's standing um, behind the ghost. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna point out that it doesn't actually say she died. Oh, all right, so, okay. Well, hopefully, fingers yeah. crossed, she's doing all right now. Um, it just says a, a male relative apparently mistook her for a skunk and fired a shotgun, hitting her in the shoulder, arm, back, and neck. She was rushed to hospital following the incident at Halloween. Uh, just repeat the places that she was hit by that single bullet again. Shoulder, arm, back, and neck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that seems like multiple shots to me. <laughs> yeah. I know some shotguns shoot out loads of little pellets. Oh, right, yeah. I suppose if it was a shotgun, I suppose it's kind of, it's kind of like a, a blast, isn't it? A spread, a spread them, doesn't it? Yeah. But yeah, but I don't know how many skunks Warren walk by being shot. Or not. Yeah, or <laughs> Warren being shot. But you know, if it was a baby crawling about, but a girl walking about standing upright. Yeah, you know, I know. That's yeah, kind of, yeah, that's someone. I mean, been smoking skunk. Like <clears> that, that, like what sort of mentality is that? You know, you just, know. just shoot on sight. Anything. <laughs> do you do you remember the story about the man that in Tesco's walked up to a woman with a baby and punched the baby in the face? Uh it rings a bell, yeah, yeah, I think so. And in court he said, I thought it was a doll. When the judge says, Why would you walk up yeah, and yeah. punch someone's doll in the face? I do you remember that, yeah. Yeah, it's like why would you do that? Yeah, just but, yeah. really random thing to do. Um, so this is this is quite a, quite a grim story here. Good um, Halloween. Uh, yeah, this is um, a chap called Ronald Clark O'Brien was executed in the U.S. after killing his own eight-year-old son Timothy by poisoning candy with cyanide on Halloween night oh, shit. in 1974. The father from Pasadena, Texas, had taken out a huge life insurance policy on his two children, and he gave them poison candy. 
Um, he also gave it to four other children. Oh, um, yes. But only his son actually ate the candy and died. That's not funny. <laughs> I d- yeah, I don't get... Well, I I'm get like, it because of the insurance for the kids, but then I don't get why he's giving it to other kids as well. Yeah. But well, even saying that, I don't get why he's giving it to his kids in the first place. But I, I understand. Know. I get the motive. Yeah. And the last one that I thought was interesting... Um, When locals in Frederica, Delaware, saw a body hanging from a tree during Halloween in 2005, they assumed it was a scary decoration. Sadly, they couldn't have been more wrong. It was actually the body of a 42-year-old woman. She'd been left hanging from the tree for several hours before residents realised it was an actual person. (laughs) Oh, bloody hell. That's awful. That's so sad. It's yeah, it's it's sad. It's tragic. Yeah, I saw. I did. I see. So I saw something similar to that where some dude in America. It's all all America. This isn't it. Yeah. Um. Some dude like his his Halloween decorations were so realistic. I think he did like a shallow grave in his garden with like hmm. a body in it. It was so realistic that the neighbours like called the police on him. Wow! <laughs> so they had the police come round and they had to explain that it was like Halloween. They thought <laughs> it was yeah. Mental. So they were just a couple of wee Halloween stories that I, I looked up. Yeah. What, um, do you, Do you enjoy Halloween? Do you do anything for it? I do because um, I do admit this. I have five children, um, so we do go quite all out for Halloween. Our house is already decorated. Oh, um, you put decorations up and stuff. Yeah. Because it never um, used to be a thing, really. Like, when I was growing up, it was just, you get one of those plastic masks. Yeah, to a, me, it was plastic fangs and a bin bag. And a bin bag. And then you just go out for half an hour and get, get mm-hmm. some sweets. Whereas now it is full on. Like, we, I mean, we're not, not doing it this year because I'm going mm-hmm. away. But, uh, yeah, we usually put decorations up and, you know, we, yeah. we make a big deal of it. And there's usually, like, in the local sort of social club or whatever, there's a, mm-hmm. a Halloween party. Uh, and people put big decorations up sort of in the local mm-hmm. area and stuff. But yeah. it's only, a, it's I'd say like the past sort of 10, 15 years that that started to be a, a thing. I think it's moved from America over to here as a, a bigger thing. Yeah, no, um, I agree. I, yeah. And, it, it seems... and, and I mean, I, again, I'm a pessimist. So it's a, just a big commercial money spinner for me. Definitely, yeah. You know, you just kind of like, what can, how, how can we exploit people more? <laughs> like, and it's also like uh, I've noticed the kids don't necessarily just dress up as scary things. It's like, it's just an excuse to get a new outfit and dress up and yeah, 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 yeah. 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 So that's our our grumpy Halloween analysis right there. Yeah, it's, yeah. I think it, we've just ruined everyone's evening now. Hopefully. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so that's been our halloween special podcast it has yeah a bit different this week like i say we thought we'd do something just a bit a bit of a mix up um try and make it a bit spooky i don't think it was that spooky was it what do you think yeah i mean there's some spooky stuff in there but you know i think it was just a good old halloween ramble uh, yeah yeah it was more of a ramble than trying to establish <laughs> although saying that what do you think about the inn the ram inn do you think that's the most haunted in, I think in yeah. the UK, <laughs> it could be yeah the most the most dangerous uh, haunted in yeah the most dangerous haunted in. so yeah there's there's some relevance to the normal podcast there so yeah definitely, we'll definitely. go with that I'm 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 uh, I'm satisfied the main thing is I've enjoyed it it's been fun it always is it always is yeah. so Fraser I mean I'm not going to see you now for a little while no, so no. I want you to enjoy your Halloween with the children okay don't get too scared um, and we'll all be there for you when you get back out. <laughs> back out of the ramen because that's where I'm going yeah the ramen the ramen <laughs> go ramen <laughs> right so I think on, on that note um, it's been a pleasure yeah never a chore man never a chore speak to you soon take, take care don't get scared don't have nightmares no no bye bye